Hello and welcome to Money Markets and More. I am back in the graveyard after my world tour and uh, today's piece is called Polyamorous Geeks, Psychopaths and perhaps the greatest fraud in history. A cautionary tale. So by popular demand, uh, we're looking at Bitcoin today and this amazing story that is FTX and gosh this is some story it's difficult to know where to start the more you dig in the more comes out it's a cautionary tale of madness the madness that engulfs crowds during investment manias and bubbles of greed delusion risk and more besides and I'm sure many of you already know the story even though there are new developments every day so we're going to recap it quickly <laughs> before moving in on to what it means for Bitcoin. So, Sam Bankman Fried was a geeky young crypto entrepreneur born to upper middle class uh, Jewish family in California. His parents were both professors at Stanford Law School. Ironic. In 2017, he set up the quantitative trading firm that's trading based on mathematical models, Alameda Research. And then in 2019 came FTX, a crypto exchange that became phenomenally successful phenomenally quickly. And in July 2021, barely two years into its existence, it raised $900 million at an $18 billion valuation. That was the Series A. Series A. Three, laters, three um, months later came the Series B. $420 million raised at a $25 billion valuation. And three months after that, in January of this year, it raised another 400 million and this time the company was rally valued at some 32 billion in just three years and to put those numbers into some kind of context the likes of Barclay, Socgen, Deutsche Bank, banks that have been around forever their market caps are lower in the 20 to 30 billion dollar range 32 billion dollars would be more than the UK collects in stamp duty in a year or fuel duty or alcohol and tobacco duties. It's roughly five times what it collects in inheritance tax. And Bankman Freed himself was worth 16 billion and at the age of just 30, he was on the front cover of Fortune magazine, along with a headline asking if he was the next Warren Buffett. And FTX's blue chip and smart money investors included Japan's SoftBank, venture capital firm, Sequoia Capital, and hedge fund Tiger Global. Even the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan put in $95 million. What has your pension fund manager been doing with your money, you may wonder? That's, that's the kind of thing that goes on. Now, there were rumours of another billion dollar raise in September. However, that didn't materialise and the Bitcoin bear market meant that the tide was going out in the crypto industry and we'd soon learn who had been swimming naked. And some started asking questions about FTX's accounting and other practices. Short sellers started taking notice. They exposed frauds more quickly than anyone. And there was just some negative coverage started to appear. Then on November the 6th, an article at Coindesk raised doubts about the balance sheet of Bankman Freed's sister company, Alameda. And that's when things started to unravel quickly. Changpeng Zhao, the CEO of Binance, the world's biggest crypto exchange, which had been an early investor in FTX, announced that Binance was selling all its FTT coins, as much as $2 billion worth. Now, FTT coins are part of the sort of the plumbing of the FTX exchange. And so the, F the value of FTT started to fall. And suddenly there was a scramble to withdraw assets from the FTX exchange. It was thought to have had the assets to back its liabilities. And Bankman Free tried to assure everyone that client funds were safe. But it seemed that this was no full reserve exchange and FTX didn't have the funds to meet the run. In fact, it seems FTX had been using some of the funds, as much as $10 billion, to shore up sister company Alameda, which had suffered significant trading losses over the past year. And by the way, watch the interview with the 28-year-old Alameda CEO, Caroline Ellison, who was said to be in a polyamorous relationship with Bankman Freed. Watch her describe how she doesn't like stop losses. It turns out there was barely any risk management at all. 
and chain analysts noted that the FTX didn't have the funds to cover withdrawals. On November the 8th, two days later, Bankman Fried said he had enough to cover all client holdings and that he doesn't invest client assets, but the run continued. And that evening, withdrawals were halted. In an attempt to restore confidence, Zhao and Bankman Fried announced that Binance would be acquiring FTX soon after. However, the following day, Zhao said that having done his due diligence, Binance would not be acquiring FTX. A day later, FTX filed for bankruptcy. Easy come, easy go. Bankman Fried's net worth went from 16 billion, that is 16,000 million, to zero in just three days. Can you believe that? <laughs> I've had some losses, but nothing like that. 72 hours, I should say. Reports are that FTX had $900 million in assets against $9 billion in liabilities. And then, the day after that, another $600 million in crypto was hacked from FTX's wallets and siphoned Lord knows where. Panama, Cayman Islands, Bermuda, somewhere like that, I guess. And apparently the hacker isn't even that sophisticated. And numerous Twitter feeds are now following the, uh, the stolen crypto. And since then, all sorts of stories have emerged. Oh my goodness. Weird goings on at the company's HQ. Um, weird sexual goings on, I should say. Alameda's um, employees all lived together in this uh, luxury flat in the Bahamas. And apparently they were all, it was, it was some kind of polyamory thing. It was like a, a sort of a geeky 60s hippie commune crossover. And you know, they were all having it off with each other. <laughs> Sorry to be so crude. Um, there are pictures of Freed, Bankman Freed sharing the stage with Bill Clinton and Tony Blair. A key employee had run an online poker company and been convicted for cheating. In other words, he'd fixed the, uh, the house. Flight checker app showed private, app, uh, private jets fleeing to jurisdictions where they can't be arrested. And the contagion has spread to other crypto operators. BlockFi, for example, has halted withdrawals. The author Michael Lewis of the big short fame has apparently already signed a film deal. <laughs> He'd been tracking Bankman Freed for six months. Surely he must have been aware of what was going on. Maybe he was keeping the story to himself and letting it unfold. Bankman Freed was the US Democrat Party's second largest donor. In 2020, he gave them around $37 million. He pledged more than a million, a billion, if Trump were to run in 2024. And given these proceeds might effectively be stolen capital, should the Democrats return the money? And heck, it's even emerged that Ukraine had money with the business. And all the while this fraud was being perpetrated, Bankman Freed donated to what he considered good causes. And he talked up his giving even more. He spoke endlessly about charity, philanthropy, altruism, utilitar utilitarianism. His talks were peppered with motivational catchphrases, all delivered with this sort of geeky, beta male sincerity. The double standards are breathtaking, given the magnitude of the fraud and the lives he's ruined. And even now, his apologies are those of an errant rich kid. He seems oblivious to the magnitude of what has happened. And illustrating the uselessness of rating agencies, as if 2008 wasn't enough, and of ESG, FTX was given a higher, higher ESG leadership and governance rating, rating than ExxonMobil. Just shows you how rigged the whole thing. Its brand has sponsored sporting event after sporting event, baseball, basketball, F1, star athletes such as Tom Brady. He appears to have lost hundreds of millions. And now, rather like JP Morgan bailing out the markets in the panic of 1907, Changpeng Zhao is forming an industry recovery fund to help projects who are otherwise strong, but in a liquidity crisis. It's all just extraordinary. So what does FTX's collapse mean for Bitcoin? It's worth remembering that in the Wild West, that is this new financial technology, we have been here before many times. In fact, most famously with MT Gox, and it's hard to emphasize just what a big deal that bankruptcy was back then. In 2014, MT Gox was the biggest Bitcoin exchange in the world. It handled over 70% of Bitcoin transactions, according to Wikipedia. 
And when news broke that it had been hacked and it suspended trading and stopped withdrawals and then filed for bankruptcy, the news precipitated an almost immediate 50% fall in Bitcoin from over $800 to $400. It would then fall by another 50% to $200 in the ensuing bear market. This time around, Bitcoin has only fallen by 20 or 25%, though other coins, Solana, especially because FTX had loads, have fallen by a lot more. And the beneficiaries have been coins of which FTX did not hold vast quantities, so there hasn't been the selling pressure. The frauds were unearthed at different stages of the market cycle, so it's not a totally valid comparison, but you get the point. Now, these are the kinds of frauds that get perpetrated in bull markets with all the accompanying euphoria. And I'd say it was very likely Alameda's poor risk management was due to the fact that it was founded almost at the bottom of the previous bear market cycle. And so they only knew bull market conditions and that guided their behaviour. But then the bear market exposed the frauds, as they always do. And the bottom line is it seems FTX was doing what banks have been doing and shouldn't be doing ever since there have been banks, regulated or not. It was taking client money and using it for other purposes. In this case, to shore up investments elsewhere and to cover trading losses. And probably to simply trade. And fortunes have been decimated, lives have been ruined. Many of the previous cycles, crypto darlings, are now headed for the scrap heap if they're not there already. The list of the top 10 coins by market cap is already very different to what it was a year ago. It's completely unrecognisable from the, from the previous cycle. But Bitcoin carries on. And there'll be many who cannot distinguish between the sound, censorship-resistant, technical genius money that is Bitcoin, other dodgy cryptocurrencies and psychopathic fraudsters. And they're going to taint one with the other. There are many, there are many who are already declaring this, this the end of Bitcoin. It won't be. It's a blow to Bitcoin and crypto more generally. The optics are terrible. This is a fraud of Bernie Madoff proportions and more. And estimates suggest that FTX has more than one million creditors, all of whom are going to be fighting over the scraps in the bankruptcy process. But remember, just because criminals use the US dollar or cars, it doesn't mean that all US dollar or car users are criminals. Bitcoin will survive, it will grow. Don't keep your money on third party exchanges, not your keys, not your coins, the saying goes. And if you are one of the people who wished they'd got into crypto but never did, now is probably not a bad time to dip in your toe. There is blood on the streets. And as somebody richer than you or I once said, that is the time to buy. Will this story mark the low? Nobody knows the answer to that. But let's just say there is a lot more bad news priced in than good. The next big line of support is around $12,500 on the US dollar chart. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with another video very soon. Um, if you want to play it safe and buy gold, <laughs> my preferred dealer is the Pure Gold Company with whom I have an affiliation deal. I'll put a link in the description. And there are still a handful of tickets left for my gig with the Gilets Jaunes in Piccadilly Circus on November the 24th. If you can't make that, there is the Christmas Knees Up with Comedy Unleashed in, uh, in Camden on December the 16th. That'll be a full show with the Gilets Jaunes. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to my Substack. And that is all I have to say to you. Goodbye.